This introduced you to an exhibition of an artist, Martin Yeoman, whose work is in many collections, including the Queen's, Prince Charles, and whose work is very close to our hearts. When you were a child, Martin, did you uh, start thinking about being a painter? Um, it's a difficult one, that, because um, I always thought, uh, from when I was very, very young, actually from about five, and, uh, but I didn't know being a painter. I just knew uh, that was art was all drawing or things were the things I really liked. And, um, and because I was actually quite a shy person, I, I used it as a sort of shield. And it was really the thing that got me all the way through school. So it's like escapism for you? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. I remember Ben, when I was, um, it was five or six, standing in the playground and looking around and looking at all the buildings and thinking, I'm going to do something that's going to be so different to these surroundings, you know. It's a funny thing, because everyone was going to do something different to that, but it, it felt significant to me. And, uh, yeah, that's, it was those sort of ideas, those sort of things that um, got me going in a way, but they also held me back as well, funny enough, later on. Um, so when you got into your teens, and yeah. you were still drawing, yeah. um, were you painting at all or just mostly drawing? I left school at 16 and um, not many uh, qualifications. Uh, my parents didn't want me to go to art school. Um, and, but I still like drawing. Um, but like I said, I was sort of uh, thought I was good, and um, that sort of got in the way a little bit. I mean, you've got to think you're good. Mm. That's what of course, uh, yeah, you know. Driving force, isn't it? <laughs> but you know, it can stop you from looking. Mm. Funny enough, and um, so then I went into commercial art, and um, I did that, f and from 16 to 19, almost 20, and then what I... Sort, what sort of things were you doing in commercial art? Uh, I worked for Selfridges. Oh, did you? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I was very proud of the fact that uh, I had all my drawings on the, on the carrier bags and all that sort of thing. I had a drawing of Selfridges to build. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'd drawn it quite small, and when it got blown up to the big carrier bags, and my name was quite big, actually, so I thought <laughs> I'd got one over on them. <laughs> and, uh, um, I had all my drawings down Oxford Street when I was about 17 and, uh, you know, uh, it, it, but in the end that wasn't enough. I started to think, I remember actually there was one particular point actually I was sitting in the studio there and thinking, if only I could meet someone who could really draw. Uh, it was, you know, it's funny these things. and. Um, Anyway, I, I, I left there with a, with a load of other people from, from the display department and because uh, I had actually moved on to the display department. And uh, we'd all travelled off to India and found out we didn't get on with each other um, by the time we got to Greece, really. And uh, so I travelled off to India and Pakistan more or less on my own. You know, I mean, it was actually marvellous. I mean, I, I was quite ill. And uh, I went back and forward from uh, India to Pakistan about oh, five, six times um, because they had free health care. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? Um, in uh, in Lahore, and I and I had a I had a I caught a I caught my foot on a nail in uh, Kashmir, and it was swelling up, and uh, it was becoming. Well, people thought it looked gangrenous. I couldn't get it in my boot. You know, and I was going to all these Sikh chemists and I was there, oh, pour some powder on it and stuff like that, you know. It wasn't getting any better. And, um, but anyway, they, I went to a hospital in, in, in Lahore and uh, they gave me something very strong and it cured my foot, it cured my cold and it cured my diarrhoea, all in one. And, uh, and all that, I don't know what it was, but it was, it was pretty amazing stuff. And after that, it was like I'd found a second strength and I could eat off of the street. <laughs> so people were offering me um, kebabs on the street that were cooked. Like, and he was always wary of things like that. You could eat anywhere, anything, anytime. It was liberation. And that liberation came with working as well. And so I found myself 
no money, so I started um, drawing. You know, I mean, I was drawing anyway. Up in Kashmir, I thought, I got the idea that I really wanted to draw, um, and I drew the houseboat owner in Kashmir, and, and I started drawing little figures that were sort of around the place, and I thought, hang on, that's really weird. I've drawn this figure, it's not moving, and I've made it completely different each time. How, why is that? And uh, so, it, you know, fixing things and understanding what you're looking at and all that sort of started becoming very important there. I, I just wanted to sort of look rather than develop a style and let the style come out of looking. And uh, that's, that was the aim. And then when I was in Pakistan, I, was in a, I, was, I stayed in Pakistan for about three months, just sort of um, living in, you know, tiny little places and then people put me up and I stayed in a, a film studio as well and I just drew and drew and drew and, and I drew on the street and I drew anybody and mm -hmm. you know uh, it was a fantastic experience. Yeah. So Martin when you, um, after you came back from uh, India and Pakistan yeah. Yeah. and uh, you know you've, you've been doing a lot of drawing and that and your, your images are very different uh, than, than when you left. Yeah. Uh, then your thoughts were about going to, to one of the art schools or art colleges. Yeah. Uh, what, what happened at that point? Did you, did you actually make your mind up to go to yeah. an art college? Or? Um, well, I made my mind up to go to any old art college when I was yeah. in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. um, when I was in India, somebody had a paperback book with, a, with, a, uh, with T. H. Lawrence, a drawing of T. H. Lawrence by Augustus John on it, and I thought that was pretty good, I must say. I thought that was really good. Uh, so, um, and also, you know, looking around you, all those characters you see on the street and the life that was on the street, it was certainly about life. It was going to be about what you could see out there. But, you know, when you come back to England, after you've seen all this activity on the street with people actually going to the toilet, having been shaved and all that sort of stuff, you know, you come back here and you think, where's the life? Where's the life? And also, the other funny thing was, Everybody looked like they'd had a, uh, had a packet of flour tipped over and they're all completely white. <laughs> it's, really, <laughs> it's really strange. Then I went to Reading University where this girlfriend had said, go out in the park and be Van Gogh, you know. Do that. She, she, was, she used to be there, Sheila. And um, I went to see the guy who ran that place and he said, look, you know, um, we, we don't draw here. I tell you now, we don't draw here. And we will try to make you become one of us. And I said, thanks very much. I went, you know, because I knew what I wanted to do about that time. And I thought that was quite nice that he was so honest about that. And then um, I went to Corsham, uh, you know, and they said, oh, you know, you're talented and all that sort of stuff. And in the end, it was my mum who said, why don't you go and see the Royal Academy? And so I took her advice and, uh, and then I met Peter Green. He said, what are you doing now? I said, look, I'm just working in a pub. I don't want to do commercial art anymore. I want to do any old job to earn a living. And um, so he said, well, you know, where are you living? I'm reading. He said, well, my wife runs a class in Oxford to do life drawing. Would you like to go and join in with them? I turned up with a brand new painting box, you know, that hadn't got any paint on it, and sitting there with my donkey coat on and my dot mines and that, sitting there. And I, I learned by looking at really good people and trying to look at the best people I could look at. I had a self-portrait that I'd spent about four weeks on every evening. And a tiny little thing that I washed over with white and kept correcting and correcting and correcting. I still give myself an enormous chin. But uh, anyway, um, it was a tiny little drawing. And I'd, I'd gone to the premiums one Saturday, and, uh, and uh, I think it was the secretary, it was, uh, uh, could have been Benita or Laura Scott or something, said, um, oh, Brinsley Ford's in, uh, in the gallery looking at your work. You know, it's a very, very you know, distinguished collector. Because I'd gone there, and you see, they put, uh, Greenham had put my self-portrait, which was about that big, about two foot from the ground. And I thought, some chance somebody people seeing that, you know. Yeah. 